Okay. So this is going to build on the skills that we did on Friday. Um, so let's go back. And, this is Friday's lesson. So this here is your 3.3. This is what we did on Friday. So how do we break this down? And we're going to unmultiply. We're going to get it back into those two binomials. Step one, the first thing we always want to do is see if there's something we can common factor from the whole trinomial. Like I can take a V out of here and here, but I can't take a V out of here. So that doesn't work. Uh, I can take a two out of here and here, but I can't take a two out of here. So there's no common factoring. So I'm just going to check. I'm going to take a quick glance and I cannot common factor. So now the first step in simple trinomial factoring is we take the invisible one and we times it by the 20 and hopefully we all get 20. And then what do we do with the factors of 20? Ooh, you can't see my 20. We're a hat. Uh, we find out um, two numbers that equal 20. We yep. multiply them. But when you add them, they equal 12. Perfect. Excellent. Couldn't have explained it better myself. So what are the factors of 20? I'll do the first one for you. I got 1 and 20. And it's a positive 20, and it's a positive 12. Uh, I got 2 and 10. 4 and 5. Any others? Any other factor pairs? No? Do you guys see the pair that we need? Yeah, you see the pair that we need? Hopefully you see it. 2 and 10. So even though there are multiple factor pairs, you want to find the set that equals up to 12. So then we're going to have v squared plus 2v plus 10v plus 20. I wrote that really spaced out today, and I'm not sure. Does it matter what order those go in? It will work both ways. Um, okay, so then I look at my first two. I look at my first two, and I see what I can common factor out. What can I take out of there? The V. I can take a V out. So if I take a V, what's left behind? V plus two. V plus two. All right, so then I'm going to look at my next two. And don't forget to take the sign in front of that 10, because that matters. So that's your second set. Uh, what am I going to common factor out of there? 10. Ten. I'm going to tell you guys that the trick is, is that every time, you should be taking that whole coefficient out. Okay? So we're going to take out a 10, but it's going to be a positive 10, so we're going to write plus 10. And I'm going to be left with V plus 2. All right, how do I know if I've done it correctly? They're the same. Those things in the brackets, this one and this one, are the same. So I know I've done it right. So I'm going to common factor those out. So if I take that out, what am I left with? V plus 10 is left, yep. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing, but now we're going to put a number in front. Um, do you guys notice anything about the numbers and the binomials? They are the same. It gets, it gets, once you get the hang of this, this goes faster. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do this one. The first thing I'm going to look for is can I common factor? So you want to check to see can I... And you guys know what a trinomial is, right? Can I common factor the whole trinomial? So something with three terms in it. Um, is there anything I can take out um, of this? I could take a 4 out of here and here, but can I take a 4 out of 9? No, I can't. 
I can take an H out of here and here, but I can't take an H out of there. So there's nothing I can common factor out. Because if you common factor, it makes it the numbers a little smaller. But in this case, I cannot common factor. So now what I do is I take the 4 and I multiply it by 9. And it's a positive 9, so I should get a positive 36. So I need the factors of 36 that are going to add up to the 20. All right, so uh, 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, and 4 and 9. And really, I found it on the second one. You guys would agree I found it on the second one. I didn't need to keep going. Like if I found it on the second one, I don't need to keep going with it. Okay, so we're going to rewrite the trinomial again. You keep the first term, so it's 4h squared plus 2h plus 18h plus 9. Yeah? I mean, for the last time, in 3.3, the actual questions like this, so I got really confused, and then I asked one of my friends, so they did, they, they did 4, like, for example, if you use their formula, they factored out the 4. Yeah, and we did that in our examples, and we did a question like that in our examples. Oh, okay. We did for 3.3. .3. Oh. If you go back and look at your notes, that example is there. Yeah, but then can we use the same formula here? I don't know what formula you're talking about, because there is no formula. Like, it's not like an area formula okay, or... I'll show you after. Okay, sounds good. I like it. All right, so I'm going to look at those first two terms. Okay, things got a little bit more complicated, but what can I take out of these two terms? We can definitely take out an H. Is there anything else we can take out? A 2. So we're going to take out this time a 2 and an H. So what's left? Rahat? Uh, H plus 1. Mm, close, but not exact. Okay, so another quick way of doing it. So if we take 4 out and we say 2 times 2 times H times H plus 2 times 1 times H. If we expand that, and you're telling me I've taken out a 2 and an H and a 2 and H. I'm just going to scribble those out because we took those out. What am I left with? 2H plus 1. Now remember, in order to check to see if this works, if I multiply that 2H back in, I should get right up the same thing that's highlighted in pink there. Okay, I'm going to look at my next two terms. What can I take out here? A Who? A nine. A nine, yes. So if I were to expand this, this would be plus nine times two times h, and this would be plus nine times one. So we're going to take out a positive nine, so I'm going to add nine here. So if I take 9 out of both of these, what's left? 2h plus 1. And I know I've done it correctly if this one and this one are the same, which they are, which is awesome. So 2h plus 1. So if those are gone, I'm left with 2h plus 9. Okay, how do we feel about that? It's not terrible because it's the same steps, but it's complicated and you really do have to pay attention. I think somebody said that to me on Friday. Like, it's not super hard, but it does take a lot of concentration just to get through one question. All right, let me flip the page. Whew, 
Lots of examples. All right. Oh, I have a capital K and I have a lowercase k. That's not good. They should be the same. Um, okay, looking at this, step one, I'm going to check to see if I can common factor that whole trinomial. Is there anything I can take out of here? I can take a 2 out of here, but I definitely can't take a 2 out of here and here. What do you know about the number 11? It's a prime number. So if it's a prime number, there's no common factoring, right? So if you end up with a prime number, um, like there's no factors of 11. I mean, I guess if there was an 11 here and 11 here, but there's no unique factors here. Um, all right. So these are going to be some big numbers, so I'm probably going to have to grab my handy dandy calculator to help me. So step one is going to be 6 times negative 35. So that's going to be a negative 210. All right, what do they have to add up to? It looks like 216. What do they have to add up to? They have to add up to negative 11. All right, let me do the first one. Uh, positive 1, negative 210. Mm, that's not going to work. I could do the opposite pair of them too, but that's also not going to work. Like the numbers are too far apart. Does anybody look at 210 and think of numbers that could be multiplied together? Okay, I like 10. What are you thinking? I like it. So it's got that 10 in it. So we're picking nice numbers now. So 10 and negative 21. So you don't have to list all the number pairs, like all the factor sets. Um, but if you're stuck, do it. Get your calculator out and just start dividing numbers into 210. Uh, I think about 210 is a pretty big number, but what about 21? Like there'd be 3 and 7, so that could be like 30 and 7, or it could be 3 and 70. Like, so there's different ways to think of the numbers. But this pair works. So this is going to be 6k squared plus 10k minus 21k minus 35. I'm going to look at those first two. What can I definitely take out of there? A definitely a K comes out. Rat, what else can come out of there? Just a two? Not a three? Uh, no, not a three. Not a three. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a 2K out of there. So once you know what you're taking out, if you want to expand this, this would be 3 by 2, K by K, plus 2 times 5 by K. And so if I take a 2K out of there, I'm going to be left with 3K plus 5. You do not have to do that expanded factored form, if that doesn't make sense to you. But it might help if you're struggling to kind of have the numbers leap off the page at you. Okay, so now I'm going to look at my next two terms. What do you notice about both these numbers? They're both negative, I can tell you that. Rahat? They're factors of seven. Ooh, factors of seven. So what am I going to take out of there? Seven. What kind of seven? Negative seven. I'm going to take out a negative seven. It's going to help. So I'm going to say subtract 7. So if I expanded this, this would be negative 7 times 3 times k um, minus, ne minus 7 times 5. So if I take out that negative 7, I'm left with 3k, and that's a positive 5, so plus 5. I know I've done it right if these two are the same. So I'm going to have 3k plus 5 and 2k minus 7. And how would we check if we did that correctly? Perhaps. We expand it by... Yeah, multiply it back together, right? 
So if you want to check to see if you did it correctly, you're going to multiply that back together. Would I check? I would check on my quiz for sure, and I definitely check on my test, even if you did it on a scrap piece of paper. Um, it, you know, put it in the box or do the leapfrog, um, but it would be helpful just to know if you've got it correct. And there's also this. If these aren't the same, then you haven't done it correctly. Okay, so if those aren't the same, you haven't done Okay, I'm going to pause. You guys are going to go. You guys are going to try one. See if you can follow the steps. I didn't write it. Yep, that's perfect. Did you get that as well? Or you just, you 
kind of pause in the middle. Perfect. And that's that's totally okay. I will tell you that three and this is good. Like these are correct. This is a positive thing. But three by negative two is a negative six. So it's just like those little things that can cause you great grief. Shared. That's the factor set. And so, I'm school drama had it all along, but I screwed up the blue. Okay. Huh? It's smarter than Of course. All right. Um, that's a big long pause in the video if you're rewatching this. Uh, I'm gonna unfreeze it. I'm gonna show you what I got. I'm super impressed. Um, with your guys' tactics. Even if you didn't get the end result, you're really, you are really making headway. But I saw some common mistakes happen. Um, first one, three by two. And you ended up with a positive six. And then your factors would be completely different. So you really do have to take that sign in front of the two. Now the next one was hard. Because there's not anything really obvious. Because both one is, well, one is prime and two is prime. So there's nothing really obvious to take out of it. When, when they don't have anything to take out, you can always take out a one. Right? Because they'll always share a factor of one. That's a given. And in this case, it was a negative one that I could factor out. Because I needed to get what was left over to be an add two. So negative one times X, and then this, instead of writing, if I wrote it like, can I, just hang on, don't write this, what I'm about to write. If you did this, what's the problem with that? Which number is negative? The two, and what did I want to take out? I wanted to take out a negative one. So I had to write my pair in a specific way so that the one was negative. So then I take that out, take the minus one out and I'm left with X and this is a positive two. So it's plus two. So you can see that concentration thing, like the math isn't super hard, but all these steps and remembering and there's little things that if you miss is going to end up screwing you up a little bit. All right. Can I common factor this part C? Can I common factor that part C? No, nope. because I can take a three out of here, but not out of here and not out of here. And there's S's in the first two terms, but not the last. So we're going to start with doing this multiply again. I like to draw the arrow just to remind myself, you do not need to do that if it doesn't, if it's not, doesn't make sense to you. You don't need to draw your arrow. I like just to remind myself. So what's that product going to be? What's that product going to be? Same as the last question. What's the mistake we might have made? We might not have looked at it as a negative 10. So the product's going to be negative 30. You guys are like 3 and 10. That'll give me 13. Right? But they have to multiply to a negative 10. So that means one has to be positive and one has to be negative. I already got it, Rahat. You're late to the show. I know you were just, I just, I had to show them up. Like I just, I couldn't, you can't have the answer all the time. Like I needed a chance. Okay, um, so again, we keep that first term, so 3s squared minus 15s plus 2s minus 10. And notice how I'm kind of expanding things like they're really far out. It's just to give myself a little bit of extra room.
So we can definitely take the letter out of there. We can take the letter S out. Can we take a number out of there? Three. We can take a three out, a positive three. So if I take out a three S, um, if I rewrite this, remembering that my common factor is three S, it would be three, 3 by 5, that gives me the 15. So if I take out a 3s, not circling them anymore, I'm just crossing them out, I'm going to be left with s minus 5. Okay, look at my last two, my last two terms there. I cannot take out a letter, and if you guys have noticed, we've never taken a letter out of the second set. This will be true. So what can I what number can I take out of here and here? What kind of two? Positive two. So I'm going to take out an add two. So this would be two times s, and then I'd have five by two. So if I take out a two, I am left with s minus five. And again, I know I've done it correctly if these are the same. Oh, I just did that. For the first time, I did this one backwards. Does it matter what order I multiply in? No. Does it matter what order I add in? Nope. Does it matter what order I divide in? Yes. Yes. Does it matter what order I subtract in? Yes. Yes, it does. All right. So multiplying, it doesn't matter what order I put them in. They're the same. Okay. How are we feeling? Are we feeling kind of confident? Kind of, sort of. Perfect. I need to be two more seconds faster next time. Two, why? Because I stole the answer from you? <laughs> yeah. All right. Can I common factor this trinomial? Can I common factor this trinomial? Yeah. Yes. What number, because I can't take a letter out because it's here, the letters are only in the first two, so I know it has to be a number. What number can I common factor out? Three. Okay, so if I take out a three, what's left? So this would be three by two by x by x. This one would be seven by three by x plus three by three. So if I take a 3 out of all of those, I've got 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Still a complex trinomial, but this way it's going to be fully factored. You would lose marks if you did not common factor out that 3. You would lose marks if you wouldn't common factor with that three. Okay, so here we go. Back to complex factoring. Two by a positive three. Six. Positive six. But I need the factors to add up to a negative seven. So what do I know my two factors have to be? They both have to be what kind of numbers? Rahat, negative. they both have to be negatives. Because two negatives multiplied together will give me a positive. Anybody know what they are? Besides Rahat? Negative one, negative six. Negative one, negative six. I like it. All right, so I still have to write down this three because it's still a factor. But now I have 2x squared minus 1x minus 6x plus 3. All right, so I'm going to look at my first two terms. What can I take out? Definitely an x. So that 3 still just keeps coming down, like it keeps coming down. So I'm going to use the square bracket this time. I'm going to pull out an x from here. Is there any number that I can take? I know Perfect. I love a hat that shows self-restraint. I appreciate that. 
Is there a number that I can take out? One, and it would be a positive one, right? Um, so, because there's no negative on front of this. So I wouldn't take out a negative one because I think it's going to get complicated. Do I need to write that I took out a one? Not really. So what's left behind if I took out an X from everywhere here? All right. What can I take out of the green set? Okay, what kind of three? Okay, if I take out a positive three, what's left behind? So if I take out a positive three, what's left behind? So this would be three by negative two by x um, plus three times one. So I'd be left with negative 2x plus 1. Are those the same? No. So I know I've done something incorrectly. But, so this is wrong if I take out a positive 3. But it's almost right. Like it's wrong, but it's almost right. Like it's almost there. If I go back to here, and I take out, this is handy dandy erasable pens, if I take out a negative 3 this time, oh, hang on. What do we got going on here? Uh, it's going to be negative 1 times negative 3. If I take out a negative 3 this time, what am I left with? 2x plus a negative 1 is the same thing as saying minus 1. So now it works because my signs match up. So that's another place that you got to pay attention to is that those signs, sometimes we just write them down because we want it to work, but that doesn't mean it's the right stuff. So that 3 still gets carried down. There's my 3. I've got my 2x minus 1. If I take that out, I'm left with x minus 3. This is my final answer. If you missed in the first step, taking out the 3, you would get full marks minus 1 half because you didn't fully factor it. Okay? So, like, if this was a 3-mark question, you'd get 2.5 out of 3 on that. Okay? All right, do you guys want to try this last one before I let you off, or do you want me, want me to do it for you? Could you please try? Sure. All right, I will pause the screen. What? Why do you think you become a Harvard professor? What do you mean a harder professor? A Harvard professor. A Harvard professor. I was like, well, here's the thing. Is Harvard is a pretty amazing place. Why is that? You're trying to keep up with your speed. My brain is going to close. Perfect. Excellent. That wasn't my goal to make your brain explode, but you picked the hard math class. You picked it. I didn't. I kind of did. I picked to teach this class. So this is the same sort of factor pairs as the example we did together.
The good news is tomorrow there's no new lesson. We're just going to do a practice sheet to get ready for our quiz. Might be a good time for us to do um, our cheat sheets as well in the class if you have time to do that. one that you had to common factor out. So first thing, multiplying that four, front four by the back four and I got a positive 16, uh, but my middle term was negative 17. So I knew that both my factors were going to have to be negative. So negative 16, negative one, they'll multiply to give me 16, but add to give me negative 17. The first set, the blue set, is pretty easy. Factor, pull out a 4H, I'm left with H minus 4. It's straightforward. But when we get to this back set here, when we get to this back set, um, it's that pesky negative 1 that we have to take out. And if you divide anything by a negative 1, it's going to change its signs. So if I pull out a negative 1, this becomes a positive H, and that becomes a subtract 4. And those are the same, those h minus 4s are the same. So then I pulled those out and those are my factors. And I can do it in a lot less steps than you guys can. So if you're looking for that expanded factor thing here, if I'm pulling out the 4h, then write, write your expanded form using 4h's. And this would be negative 1 times h. This would be a negative 4 times negative 1, because remember it has to equal that positive 4. So if I take out that negative 1, I'm left with h plus a negative 4, which is the same thing as h minus 4. It's really, like this is your number sense from grade 8, grade 7, grade 9, like being able to switch back and forth between subtracts and negatives and things like that. Um, and I go back and forth between them really constantly and if you're not comfortable with that yet that's going to take you some time to get used to 
Um, or if you have a question about what I did, uh, I can definitely go over it um, if you want to just ask me questions. So you re like this is one of the hardest lessons in this course. So you really actually need to do your homework tonight. For realsies. But if you haven't done 3.3, I would suggest you do that first because it's kind of like the baby steps before you do 3.4. 3.3 was baby? 